Hey everybody, welcome to Healing Hearts. I'm here, Rakaya Gibson with the Damani Gibson Foundation. And I have my friend who joined us a couple of times this summer for CPR demonstra demonstrations, Jennifer Sarmento from the Kyle J. Taylor Foundation. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? <laughs> if you guys could do us a favor, go ahead and share this video on your page. We're gonna share life-saving tips for your household. CPR is important for everybody to know. 70% of sudden cardiac arrest do occur in the home. So it's important for you to be empowered to save a life, um, know how to do CPR, basic compressions, to maintain the, the vitality, the life of someone while you're waiting on EMS. Um, we'll be talking tomorrow about average response times for the emergency um, personnel for ambulance, but I know for me it was well over 15 minutes. How long did it take for them to get to Kyle? Do you know? Uh, well, he once he collapsed, it was about 15 minutes before his friends even found him. But from the time that the uh, ambulance was called or 911 was called, it was fairly quick. It was just a couple minutes. He would his friend literally lived around the corner from the hospital. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, just go ahead. And before we get into the CPR demo, we want to give you guys a few tips. If you do not have a mannequin at home, that's understood. But um, you can use a ball. This volleyball has the a good um, amount of tension to where you can do compressions on this. And then also there's a little tip where you'll see Jennifer and myself putting together a t-shirt and a roll of toilet paper. So you can run and grab a t-shirt and toilet paper right now so you can practice along. Pull the t-shirt through the roll of toilet paper, like so. And then you are going to wrap a towel around the t-shirt and toilet paper. And now you have something to give you tension to do CPR compressions on. I had a friend who messaged me last night and was like, um, I need to know where can I learn CPR because she's starting to worry about, you know, her family and just being able to respond. So it was perfect. We already had the schedule, so I invited her on. But everybody, you can either have your towel set or grab a ball. And we're going to get started with the basic skills of CPR. This is not going to take long. Um, so Jennifer, Jennifer is a certified CPR instructor. And she's going to guide us along the way with some of the basic tips of CPR today. Sure. You want to give everybody okay. a couple yeah. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to grab their supplies, but while we're waiting, why don't you tell us, Jennifer, about the run? Jennifer is one of the foundations that's participating in the run for the race to end sudden cardiac arrest. The link is right here. Let me put it up on the screen. And when you go to it, you can just click the drop down to go to Kyle to support Jennifer and Kyle J. Taylor Foundation or go to Damani to support the Damani Gibson Foundation. Jennifer, um, why should people sign up for this for this race? Well, you know, I just think it's great that we're all teaming up together to do something like this, right? I mean, all of us do our own individual found, uh, run fundraisers, but there's really nothing out there that really brings awareness to sudden cardiac arrest, like a walk, like, you know, the breast cancer walks or the Alzheimer's walks that I know they're coming up this weekend. So, you know, for all of us to, to team up together just to get more awareness out there with each other, you know, there's there's power in numbers, as we've all said. So, you know, helping each other get it out there and just, you know, remembering that this is happening, that October also is Sudden Cardiac Awareness Month is a great time to do this. And all the money raised will help us continuing doing what we're doing with the screenings and AED donations and CPR trainings and that kind of thing. So it's a great right. cause to support a lot of small nonprofits just like ours. Right. Thank you for that. So make sure you guys sign up for the walk. It's very easy to do. It takes two minutes to sign up. Please do that. And the walk is easy. It's something that's good for your heart health anyway. So support all of the foundations that are coming together because we are stronger together. And as we make this massive noise, then maybe we're going to get to make changes to where people start paying attention to sudden cardiac arrest. Getting the media attention is going to take us, the people, standing together and demanding, just like COVID, changes have been made in, in, in the way that we live life. And changes need to be made in the way that we live life to save kids from sudden cardiac arrest. So let's get into the CPR um, demonstration. Okay. So... 
before you start any CPR on anybody, you obviously need to make sure that they're in fact not breathing, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do before you start any compressions on somebody is you're gonna wanna make sure that they are um, not breathing. So what you're first gonna wanna do is say my, my, my patient, his name is Bob. I'm gonna say, Bob, Bob, are you okay? Are you okay? And if he doesn't are respond, you okay? you're gonna wanna do this for about five or 10 seconds, right? You're gonna tap him on the shoulder and say his name, if you know his name, if not, you're just gonna say, are you okay, are you okay? And um, if you still want, want to make sure 100% they're not breathing, what you can do is put your head down to, towards their mouth and listen to see if you hear any breathing and if you see their chest moving, okay? And when we say breathing, we're talking about normal breathing. We're not talking about gasping for air. Gasping for air is not normal breathing, okay? A lot of people that go into sudden cardiac arrest, we have been told, I know Rakai and I have heard many stories of people that we have met that um, CPR was not done because I was breathing when in fact they were actually gasping for air. So when we're talking about breathing, we're talking about normal in and out breathing of somebody. We're not talking about gasping for air, okay? Let me ask you something about that. And so a lot of times they're going to either have agonal breathing or it might even look like a seizure at that time. But you still need to do like Jennifer said and check to see if there's any normal breathing going on. But if they are seizing and their body is jerking, that's not normal breathing. If they um, are gasping for air, <gasps> that's not normal breathing, okay? Yeah, exactly. So once you've determined that they're in fact not breathing, you're gonna to wanna to tell a bystander, call 911 and grab an AED, okay? If you don't have somebody nearby, hopefully you got your cell phone nearby, you can tell your phone to call 911. We all have, I don't wanna say it because I don't want my phone to call 911, but you can have your phone called 911 for you directly. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to actually start compressions on this person. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna start, you're gonna push hard and fast in the middle of the chest. And when we say the middle of the chest, we're really talking about right here and right in the breastbone area, right in the middle of the breast, okay? You're gonna do compressions at about um, uh, 100 to 120 uh, pace mi um, per minute, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is lock your fingers together. You're gonna to use the, the palm of your hand right here. You're gonna stick it in the middle of their chest. You're gonna lock your elbows and you're gonna count. One, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, nine, and 10. And you're gonna keep doing this until, uh, until you know, it's, the EMT shows up or the person starts breathing again. Um, how I learned it to be an instructor is you do 30 compressions in two breaths. Um, so you would do 30 compressions and then give them two breaths. I know a lot of people don't wanna do that right now with everything going on. So if you only wanna do hands only CPR, that is, that is, is you're helping that person just as much if you don't wanna do the breath. So um, again, it's, it's the compressions of one and two, Three and four and five and six. Yeah, <laughs> you get kind of winded, but you're going to keep going. So, and then once somebody shows up, either the EMT or an AED shows up, you're going to want to put the AED on. So, we can go through that next. Is there any? question or anything, Rakaya, that I missed or anything on that? No, I think you did great. Let's go ahead and just go through a full 30 compressions, and hopefully people that are watching with us can do their 30 compressions. I'm going to um, miss one. I'll do the ball, just you can see. Okay. With the ball, you, you're just going so you can get the rhythm, okay? okay. You'll do the time. Okay. All right. So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay? And then you're gonna be friends. You're pushing hard and fast, and just to reiterate what Jennifer said, you're going to take your hand, lock these fingers through, you're going to have your arms straight, you don't want them here, you want to get where you're perpendicular to the body, and you're right in that center that she showed you, and you're pressing about two inches deep, um, and I know the song that they show is like, ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. A lot of younger people don't know that song, so you can just count, but... Um, that's just to refresh on what Jennifer just said. 
Now we're going to go to, did you say the AED? Yeah. Let me see if we have a few questions. I see some comments here. Let me see. Make sure. Okay. All right. SCA month. This is a good refresher. Thank you so much. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so just to reiterate really quick. So you don't want to stop at 30. We just did that to practice. You're going to do 30, two breaths, 30, two breaths. Or if you're not doing breaths, you're going to do, you're just going to continue to go. You can count to 100. You know, you don't have to count to 30 if you're doing hands only CPR. And you're going to keep going, keep going, keep going until someone else relieves you to the EMS arrives or until the person regains consciousness. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So then, um, you know, hopefully they, so hopefully there's an AED on no, close by that somebody can grab. Um, these are just trainer AEDs, but they are all the same. And one of the things I just want to emphasize is that a lot of people, even before this happened to my son Kyle, I didn't realize how easy AEDs are to use, right? So, and you cannot hurt somebody. You can't hurt somebody by using an AED. It will not shock them unless a shock is advised. And you'll hear that when we do the, the, the training thing here. So, can I say one thing real quick, Jennifer? So, if the AED gets to you, before, like say for instance you have one at your house, I don't, you know, it depends, then you can attach the AED um, because it will give you the beat for the CPR and it will talk to you. Some AEDs will tell you if the CPR is effective or not. I know Zoll AEDs do that, um, not all AEDs do, but all AEDs usually give you like the rhythm to keep, it counts for you, it gives a ticker. Um, and I know that these practice AEDs are going to do that. So AEDs can be purchased for your home. I now look back and I'm like, if we have fire extinguishers in our house, why doesn't everybody need to buy us to have an AED? At least, you know, on the block, you know, have a designated person that's going to have somewhere close by that you know you can get an AED if it's necessary. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So yeah, so what you're gonna wanna do first is actually just turn it on and you're gonna follow the voice commands. Remove clothing from adult patient. Open packet and apply. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you got bare skin. So you have a shirt on, if some AEDs come with scissors or other supplies, let the shirt off or unbutton it quickly, but you're gonna want bare skin before you put the pads on, okay? The pads will have where you need to place them. So one pad is going to go over their right uh, uh, breast um, right here. So you can see on the picture, it shows. I don't know how much you can see that. But okay. you're going to push them onto the skin. Okay. The other one goes under here, under the breast here. Okay. Press pads firmly on skin. Touch them. Because if it shocks them, you could get shocked. So make sure nobody's Do touching the patient. the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Shock advised. Do not touch the patient. You can leave the pads on and continue doing CPR again. Okay? So you don't have to okay. okay. Before you go into that again, we have a question that says, where's the exact spot to do the compressions? So right in the middle of the chest, center of the chest. So right between their breast right here. So right middle of the chest. So if you look at the nipple area, you just go right into the middle, right there. Okay. And then you go into um, compressions again and leave the AED pads on, correct, Jennifer? Yes. And it will tell you, and it will tell you when it's time to analyze a rhythm again. Exactly, and it will keep doing that um, until you know. You just keep doing that until help arrives, and hopefully they're on their way. Right. Okay. So let me see. Now, now that you guys know how to attach the AED, you don't have to be afraid of that. It's simple. I grabbed this bag because this is part of my. Um, Zoll AED and it has like you said it comes with like scissors it comes with a razor if you, somebody's chest is really hairy and you need to get that off um, in order for the pads to fit or so this is the AED 
Is there? Did you say there's like a little towel in there too? Because one thing's too, if they maybe they were in water or something, you know, you might want to dry them off a little bit before the pads are put on too. Yeah, there's a little cloth, like a napkin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's for the a, the pads to stick, because yeah. like most of them, it's not like it's gonna electrocute them or anything. Right, right, yeah. But does the AED show, um, hold on, here's a question for you, Jennifer. Does the AED show the heart rhythm like a cardiac monitor? Um, not, on, not on this one, and I don't know of any that do. Um, it will just tell you if a shock is needed to be advi it is advised to, to do them. So it doesn't detect a heart rhythm, but it doesn't. And I know, I know that the AEDs like record somehow, like they can be on a USB device. And so this can be part of the, like when you get to the hospital, now the hospital can know the, what the AED said and why the shock was advised. Um, it'll tell you like if it was AFib and all of those different terminologies, but not necessarily the rhythm. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, and the other thing too is, so I think yours, I heard you when you hit the button said adult AED, does yours have a setting for pediatric or, AE, or adult AEDs? It did. I turned mine off so that both of them weren't talking at the same time. <laughs> So mine does but, not. But okay, let's talk about that though. You can talk about how, where to put the pads, but before we talk about where to put the pads, can you run through Elvira? Don't get off yet. I want you to see um, infant CPR because you have a baby. Um, so, um, well, we don't have a baby to demonstrate, but you're going to, instead of using the two hands, Jennifer, if you can kind of explain the two fingers. Yeah, I, would, I wish I would have brought the, my baby uh, CPR doll out. If I was close by, I'd go grab it really quickly. but. What you're going to do is instead of the two fingers, if you have the baby, you're going to want to hold the baby and hold two fingers, okay? And you're going to want to press in the middle of their chest and do the same thing, right? Two inches deep, 100 to 120 pace, um, and um, just keep doing it, right? So that's the only difference. You're just going to use the two fingers, and you're going to hold the baby in your hand and then and press here, okay? So maybe next time we do this, I'll make sure I have the baby one so I can do the infant one. But what you can do is, because um, I've had this question a couple of times, is if if the AED doesn't have an infant setting or a baby setting, you can use adult ones on the front. So you're going to put one pad on the front of the baby's chest and then on one on the back, on their back. Okay? So that's the only difference. The only difference is if, um, if for some reason the AED doesn't have adult pads, but it only has infant pads, but you're helping an adult, the infant setting won't help an adult, but the adult setting will help an infant because it doesn't give off enough shock if, if you do need to do that. So that's the only difference there, but um, but yeah. And then you would do the, the two breasts as well, the 30 compressions with the two breasts with the baby as well. That we can do. Now, if you're working on a family member, this is at home, uh, Jennifer, would you advise them to go ahead and do the breasts or to do the compressions only? No, I would tell them to do the breasts. I mean, if it's somebody you know, a family member, then yeah, absolutely. And some of the AEDs come with little like protection things too in there, like little plastic, um, yeah, like where you can cover their mouth. Um, yeah. So, and this I one is really big. <laughs> it has a little mouth thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can use that too, so you can protect yourself. Um, but if it's your son, your daughter, your mother, your auntie. Get down there. So let's show them how to do the breaths. So let's do 30 compressions okay. with two breaths. Okay. All right. So again, middle of the chest, two inches down, uh, and uh, and you're going to count. So ready? One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 30, okay? And you're going to go here and you're going to get two breaths. One, two, okay? And that's it. And then you're going to go back to doing the 30 and then back to doing breaths if you want to do breaths, okay? So some people may say, what if you choked on something? Should I try to get it out? No, just, I would not mess with that. Wait till the, wait till the EMT comes. Um, something and you're concerned about giving them the breasts, you know, to push it maybe farther down, then don't do the breasts. Okay? 
So there's really let me, let, let me read you this question. It says, does the mask block puke from the patient? Now, let me tell you, if it's your child, yeah. don't matter. I don't care. Yeah. It, I, I didn't care about nothing, none of that. And if it's if it's puke and you don't want to touch it, then there's no reason you don't have to do the breaths. Yeah. CPR can be effective without the breaths. It's just an added benefit to give the breaths. But you can keep the oxygen flowing by keeping the blood flowing through the body with the hands only compressions. So right. don't worry if you're queasy about it. Um, right. But at the end of the day, we're doing I'm doing everything I can to save a life. Um, but yeah, if it's a stranger, you know, maybe not, maybe not the breaths. It's up to you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. We're coping a lot around, you know, right now, you know, people are going yeah. to do that. So, but yeah, I mean, what, that's what you're doing, right? When you're doing the pushes, you're just getting the the blood to flow to get oxygen to their brain. That's what, what you're doing. So by not doing the breaths, you're not harming them in any way. By not doing Right. You're, you're keeping that, you're keeping them, um, giving them a chance to survive. Yeah, exactly. Wendy, I know. Cause you, I know you had to give CPR to your son as well, Wendy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but the mask, I don't think it would block that, but thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. Jennifer, any like last takeaway points you want to give? No, I would just say, you know, a lot of people are worried, well, if you're not certified, I shouldn't do CPR. Watching this demo and just practicing on the stuff that, you know, Rakai and I have told you that you can practice on is better than nothing. So if you have somebody and you're worried because you're not certified in CPR, don't be. Just do what you've, what you've seen us do, what you've seen on, you know, TV or whatever, because doing something is better than doing nothing to help somebody. So uh, right. I, I you to jump in, even if you're not certified um, to, to, to do CPR on somebody um, to do it. So. There have been stories of kids, like even young kids, like 10, 12 years old, that have saved people just from yeah. what they saw on a, a TV show or a movie and mimicking yeah. that when grandpa or dad passes out and they were able to save them. So yeah. the, the key is immediate CPR. As soon as you determine that that person is unresponsive, jumping into action. I want to talk really quick about, you know, just with sudden cardiac arrest, it is not always dramatic. It's not like... This person is walking, and then all of a sudden, boom. It doesn't always happen like that. This person can be sitting down in a chair, and then all of a sudden, they look like they've fallen asleep. If it's odd for them to have fallen asleep like that, then I want you to check for responsiveness. Like she said, Bob, are you okay? He doesn't respond. Bob, are you okay? All right. If um, the person, like if you're at practice and someone's laying down after practice and then they look like they've fallen asleep, same thing. Because if you've watched some of the videos on YouTube, some of the parents have said that the kids around their, their child have thought that they were resting or thought that they were playing. It's important that we check for responsiveness. Also, if somebody looks like they've had a seizure, making sure that it is a seizure versus their body just not getting oxygen to the brain and it's doing those jerky motions. Yes. Another reason that people sometimes haven't jumped into action with CPR is they thought someone got hit in the head with a ball or that they hit their head and that's why they feel. Let's not assume that it's a concussion. That's, let's not assume that it's something else. Let's always check for responsiveness and see if CPR is needed. And then uh, like we, we'll wean it out if we don't need to do it. But right. don't just stand back and not do it. Like Jennifer said, it's better to do something than not to do anything. Yeah. And you won't hurt the person if they're unconscious. Like they're already as hurt as they're gonna be. So you have to do something to help them regain consciousness. Right, I mean, the number is what? One out of 10 people will survive a sudden cardiac arrest without CPR. And I think it jumps to like five or six out of 10 if CPR is at least administered. So you're giving that person a, a really high chance of survival just by jumping in and doing that CPR as quickly as you can. So. Um, yeah. Right, right. And then another thing is, you know, we say that the kids learn CPR in health class. A lot of them have, but it's not with the seriousness that it needs to be given. And that is a short little refresher that they get. So having a refresher, I have so many kids who've told me that they already know CPR because they did it in health. And then when they went to go and practice compressions with me, have had no clue what to do. So go ahead and refresh this, share this on your pages. This is life-saving information that's quick and easy, under 25 minutes. Um, 
also that um, kids know that they can do this. Adults know that they can do this. Everybody can do this. Everybody can save a life. You have the power to save a life in the palm of your hands. Um, share the videos. And just to point out another statistic, they say that Blacks and Hispanics are 40% less likely to receive bystander CPR than whites are. And a big part of that is because you don't know how to do it. You know, we have to learn, we have to educate. Knowledge is power. So share, share, share um, the video about the CPR. We will be back again. We did one in the summer, but before the um, race to end sudden cardiac arrest, I plan to do it each, you know, every four or five days. So I'm going to do another one next week. Tomorrow we're having an in-depth talk about AEDs and how COVID has impacted sudden cardiac arrest with Lori Peters from Zoll. So make sure that you guys tune in tomorrow and she's going to debunk some myths and talk about the truth behind AEDs. Jennifer, yeah. any last thoughts? Yeah, I think only one other point that I would make um, is people are afraid to do it because they're afraid if, God forbid, this person doesn't survive and they do CPR, that they're going to be held responsible. There are good Samaritan laws to protect you. So don't be afraid to help somebody just because you are afraid, gosh, if that person doesn't survive, they're going to hold me accountable. That's not the case. There are laws out there to protect you for that. So please jump in. If you see somebody that needs it, just jump in and try to help. Um, thank you for having us, Rakaya. I, I so love doing this with you. And, um, you know, yeah. It's Thank great. you so much. Thank you so much. CPR is a life-saving tool, so share this video. Also, please, if you can do me a favor right now, go ahead and register for the Race to End Sudden Cardiac Arrest. Show some love to my friend Jennifer um, and, and register on her uh, page, which would be what you see um, here in Kyle. Actually, you can put your direct link in the comments when we get off, Jennifer, so your people can see the link and register. Guys, let's just say this real quick. I know a lot of people are saying they're going to register and a lot of people are sharing the race and we, we appreciate that so much. But a lot of people are waiting and they're putting it off and there's really no reason to put it off. Um, if you want to make the donation, the donation is $10, but there's also free links on the site to where you can register for free. And just make sure you register because we need the momentum. The more that we get people to sign up, the more people will be able to get to sign up and so that we can make a huge statement so that this can become a movement. You all will be uh, the helping forces to help us start a movement for sudden cardiac arrest that is unstoppable because with the power of social media, we have the power to get the media's attention and make this something that change changes are demanded for. If you look at Italy and how they've reduced sudden cardiac arrest by 90%, by making awareness key, implementing preventative tests, and um, increasing the knowledge of response. So if you take 7,000 kids and you reduce that number by 90%, we're, we're losing so many kids unnecessarily that can be prevented. Help us, help you, help us nice, to help you. And the nice thing is this being virtual, you don't have to be in Houston where you are or in San Jose, California, where I am. You could be anywhere over the country and just walk in your own neighborhood to help us, right? You don't have to come to a location. So that's the nice thing about this virtual thing. You don't have to be in our community to participate as well, which I love. So we can get everybody all over the place that, you know, that's friends with us on Facebook or Instagram to, to walk with us, so. Awesome, well, thank you so much. And thank you once again to the Kyle J. Taylor Foundation, the Dunamani Gibson Foundation. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in, um, Elvira, Wendy, all of our friends who've joined us today. And please share the video and you have the power to save a life. Help us help you, Sudden Cardiac Arrest Month. And we're gonna do this together. We're stronger together. Healing Hearts, I'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time as we talk to Lori Peters of Soul. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Kaya.